Podcast. Welcome to the Prayer Motivator devotional broadcast with Daniel White III. We are glad that you have joined us as Daniel White III motivates us and encourages us to simply just pray for the glory of God. Daniel White III is the national best-selling author of over 20 books. He has spoken in meetings across the United States and in over 25 foreign countries. He is the president of Gospel Light Society and Torch Ministries International. Now here's your host, Daniel White III. Welcome to another prayer motivator devotional broadcast. We praise the Lord that this is broadcast number 343. As always, it is absolutely wonderful to be with you today to encourage you to pray. Today I would like to begin by sharing with you a poem titled Prayer for Life by Janet Martin. Take my hand, dear Lord, I pray. You will never lead astray. In life's pathways there are two. Let my footsteps follow you. Kindly shepherd of us all, hold me so I will not fall. Let my thought and action prove the indwelling of your love. Teach my lips to sing your praise through the battle and the blaze. Satisfy my spirit, Lord, as I feed upon your word. Be my glory and my boast. Be the wisdom I crave most. Fix my earth-dimmed gaze to trust in true hope beyond this dust. Lift me up when I am weak. Temper every word I speak. Savior, Father, Jesus, friend, keep me till my journey's end. Ladies and gentlemen, the simple purpose of this broadcast, as you know, is to motivate, encourage, and exhort you to simply just pray. Pray in faith, believing. Pray based upon the Word of God. This radio broadcast is not necessarily for people who already know the secret and power of prayer and who actually practice genuine prayer on a regular basis. Rather, it is for those who may find it difficult to pray, or for people who claim they do not have time to pray. I am convinced that most Christian people do not need to learn how to pray. They simply need to just pray. If I can get you to just pray, yes, in the spirit of Nike, just do it. I believe all sorts of wonderful things will begin to happen inside you and for you, your family, and whatever God has called you to do. We do not pray based upon our subjective feelings. We do not pray based upon, rather, we do not pray based upon our subjective feelings. We pray, rather, based upon objective facts in the Word of God. We pray, ladies and gentlemen, whether we feel like it or not, if we are children of God. Our prayer motivator verse from the Word of God today is Psalm 39 12, which reads, Hear my prayer, O Lord, and give ear unto my cry. Hold not thy peace at my tears, for I am a stranger with thee, and a sojourner, as all my fathers were. Allow me to share with you some important comments and ideas and thoughts from Brother Matthew Henry of days gone by. We notice that these afflictions had set David a praying and afflictions are sent to stir up prayer if they have that effect. And when we are afflicted, we pray more and pray better than before. 
we may hope that God will hear our prayer and give ear to our cry. For the prayer which by his providence he gives occasion for and which by his spirit of grace he indicts shall not return void. We will discuss and share more from this passage in our next broadcast if the Lord should tarry his coming and we live. Ladies and gentlemen, my personal encouragement to you today is this. You can pray to God anytime and anywhere. God will help you to pray with your family every day. I know he will because in over 25 years of marriage, I have never missed a day in prayer and family devotions with my own family. And it is the single most important reason why we are still together and thriving in the work of the Lord. Prayer is where the power is. And it may be trite, but it is true. The family that prays together stays together. Somebody ought to say amen right where you are. Ladies and gentlemen, our prayer motivator quote today is from John Sale. He said, The design of prayer is not that the immutable will of God be altered, but that his will may be accomplished in his own good time and way. Our prayers are not intended to change the purpose of God or to move him to create new purposes. God has not only decreed the end of all things, but he also has decreed the means to reach that end. Thus, it is improper for us to say that because God is sovereign and is in control of all things, certain things will happen whether we pray or not. That must be absolutely rejected because God has ordained that prayer be the means to accomplish his purpose. Our prayer motivator devotional today, my brothers and sisters, is part one of a new series titled The Limitless Possibilities of Prayer from that Prince of Prayer, Dr. John R. Rice. Psalm 81.10 reads, I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Open thou thy mouth wide, and I will fill it. Jeremiah 33 reads, uh, Jeremiah 33, 3 reads, Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things, which thou knowest not. The infinite, almighty God is able to give great answers, to prayer. If there be a God, creator of the heavens and earth, the sustainer of all things, then it would be silly to quibble that he is unable to answer prayers and uh, any kind of prayers and uh, answer them to any extent, provided only that to answer the prayers would be right. God cannot lie. God cannot sin. God cannot be tempted. God can, in his infinite power and authority, do anything that is right. Not only has God the power to give mighty answers to prayer, but he has the disposition. God delights to answer prayers for big things because he is not only the infinite and almighty, God but the loving father of his children. If the creation of the world proves God's power, then the giving of his own son is redeeming love to save lost men. Uh, to save lost, lost men proves his willingness to bless. Romans 8.32, which says, He that spared not his own son but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Is the way the Holy Spirit himself records this willingness of God 
to give mighty things, literally all things, to his own. God is able and willing to answer big prayers for mighty things. Of course, he is uh, willing and able to answer small prayers as well. Uh, your, yours truly is adding that last point. Now, friend, it is time for us to pray. That is right. We don't just talk about prayer here. We actually pray. Please remember, the announcer will provide the information for you to send in your prayer request at the end of this broadcast. Let's pray together. Holy Father God, as we have just been reminded, help us, Lord, to understand the importance of fasting and prayer in our lives. Help us to, as we've studied this for many weeks, help us to also uh, realize and understand that you hear and answer our prayers and you answer and you're able to answer big prayers and small prayers and prayers in between. All power and might is in your hands. So Lord, we pray also today that you would bless and strengthen and lead God and direct all of your pastors and church leaders and missionaries around the world who stand for you and who are truly helping your people. We pray also, Lord, for over three million people to come to know you as Savior. Lord, we also pray for the revival of your church. And Lord, we pray for the healing of this nation according to your will, way and time. And we do look forward to your coming back soon. Lord, we also pray that you would save, lead, guide, and direct, and give wisdom to the President and all governmental officials in this country and in every country of the world so that they may do your will and not theirs. Now, Lord, we pray for three people who have sent in their prayer requests to our ministry here at Gospel Light Society. Lord, we pray for David in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Help him not to be afraid and to deliver his testimony before his church congregation. Lord, we pray for Reverend Mbua. Uh, help their church, Lifeway Assembly, to grow. I believe this church is in uh, Kenya. Uh, if it's not, it's in Africa, I do believe. Lord, we also pray for Mercedes in Miami, Florida. Uh, lead God and direct her daughter in her relationships. Let your will be done in her life. Holy Father God, now we pray for the following people. Ibuku no Lua in Lagos, Nigeria. Olasupo in Lagos, Nigeria, and we pray for Ronald in Knoxville, Tennessee. Lord, we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you for recently saving them and uh, changing their lives. We pray, Lord, that you would strengthen them in the faith and have them to grow in the faith. Fill them with your Holy Spirit. Help us to be the disciples of the new of the new disciples. And, Lord, help them to find a good Bible-believing church where they are. Rebuke and bind the devil and his demons and his hosts from them. Place upon them the whole arm of God and help them to grow and to be a witness for you. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Uh, Lord, we know that that is your will. Now, Lord, we pray for the following people. Kumi in Ghana, Forrest in Savannah, Georgia. David in Massachusetts. We pray, Lord, for these. These are people who have uh, chosen to rededicate their lives to you. They have already been saved. They're coming back to you, recommitting their lives to you. We rejoice with them in this decision, and we pray that they will keep their commitments to you and be strengthened in the faith by the power of your Holy Spirit and the power of your Holy Word. In Jesus Christ's name, we commit all of these people into your hands. Amen. Uh, dear friend, if you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as your uh, Lord and Savior, 
your first prayer needs to be what we call the sinner's prayer. Please understand that you are a sinner, just as I am a sinner, and that you have broken God's laws. The Bible says in Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Please understand that because of your sins, you deserve a permanent, permanent punishment in a place called hell. Romans 6.23 says the wages of sin is death. This is both physical death and spiritual death in hell. The lake of fire. That is the bad news. But thank God there's some good news. The good news is John 3.16. The gospel in a nutshell. Jesus Christ said these words, by the way. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, perish in hell, but have everlasting life in heaven with God. The Bible also says in Romans 10, 9 and 13, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now, dear friend of mine, if you are willing to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ for your salvation, please pray with me this simple prayer. Holy Father God, I realize that I am a sinner and that I have done some bad things in my life. For Jesus Christ's sake, please forgive me of my sins. I now believe with all of my heart that Jesus Christ died for me, was buried, and rose again. Lord Jesus, please come into my heart and save my soul and change my life today and forever. Amen. Dear friend, if you believed sincerely in your heart that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins, was buried and rose again. And you meant this prayer from your heart. May I say congratulations to you on doing the most important thing in life, and that is trusting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. For more information to help you grow in your newfound faith in Christ, go to gospelightsociety.com and read what to do after you enter through the door. Until next time, remember, dear friend, pray, think, do. God bless you.